FCM-36 was one of the light tanks used by the French Army in the battles of May and June 1940. Despite being relatively unknown, it was quite technically advanced compared to other French light tanks and proved its effectiveness during a victorious counterattack at Vonk in early June 1940. However, the vehicle's many qualities were overshadowed by the outdated doctrine behind its usage and construction and its very limited presence on the front lines. Welcome to Tank Encyclopedia. I am Alcazar, and I will be covering the angular abomination that is the FCM-36. A big thank you to those of you who are already subscribed, and we would ask those of you who are not to please consider doing so. It is important to have an understanding of the French tanks during the Great War in order to properly understand those of 1940. After the Schneider and saint Chamond entered service in 1916, a smaller machine was conceived, the iconic Renault FT. It was a success. By the end of the fighting in November 1918, France had an impressive fleet of FTs, with several thousand of the vehicles in frontline service. Its widespread presence and effectiveness on the front line earned it the nickname of Victory Tank. Without an immediate replacement, the FTs were kept within tank regiments for years. They formed the backbone of the French army until the early 1930s. By this point, there were around 3,000 in service, but they were old, worn out, and outdated. Predicting an armaments program aimed at replacing the aging FTs, Hotchkiss self-funded a study of a modern light tank. This study allowed for the definition of the characteristics for a new armament program. The program requested a light infantry support tank. It required essentially a highly improved copy of the Renault FT. Two crew members, one of which was stationed in the turret, were to control the vehicle. The one-man turret was quickly criticized because its intended user was to serve as gunner, loader, and commander of the vehicle, and would be greatly overburdened. In addition to operating both weapons, the commander, gunner, loader, would have had to give orders to the driver, observe the outside of the tank, and sometimes even command movement to other tanks. Fourteen firms took part in the competition, but only six of them were selected to build prototypes. In March 1934, forges and shipyards of the Mediterranean, or FCM for short, offered a wooden mock-up of their proposal. The commissioners were pleased with the futuristic shapes of the mock-up. A first prototype was ordered and received by the Experimentation Commission in April 1935. However, trials on the FCM prototype were unsatisfactory. The commission agreed to have the vehicle sent back to the factory and modified. The second prototype was tested between September and October. It was accepted under the condition that modifications concerning the suspension and clutch be carried out. After a second trip back to the factory, the prototype was presented again to the Commission in December. In an official document from July 1936, the Evaluating Commission described the FCM-36 as equal if not superior to other light tanks already experimented with. The vehicle was finally introduced into service in the French Army, and a first order for 100 vehicles was placed. Of the tanks from the program, the FCM-36 probably had the most suitable internal arrangement, with crews appreciating the space. A rear-mounted drive sprocket and drive mechanisms resulted in the driver having far more space than in other vehicles of the program. As recorded in the testimonies of many FCM-36 drivers and mechanics, the added space helped on longer trips. The FCM-36's turret was judged superior to the APX-R turret, which equipped the Renault and Hotchkiss tanks from the same program. It was more ergonomic and offered the commander better observation capabilities with numerous episcopes. Episcopes allowed for outside view without having to have a direct opening to the exterior of the vehicle, protecting the crew from enemy fire on observation slits. However, photos of FCM-36s often show the episcopes absent, 
especially around the driver's hatch. This is not surprising, as many other French armored vehicles went into combat missing bits of the equipment and accessories that were manufactured separately from the vehicle. Significantly, the FCM-36 lacked a radio. Unlike other French tanks, the requirements of the program stipulated a two-man crew, which ruled out a radio operator. In order to communicate with other tanks and infantry around the vehicle, the commander could fly small flags called fanions through a hatch on the turret roof, fire flares, or talk directly to someone outside. Alternatively, commanders could also communicate by putting messages inside of special shells and firing them out of the cannon. Because apparently, someone thought this was a sensible idea. One of the most important aspects of the FCM-36 was its armor. Its special construction, made of laminated steel plates welded to one another, differed from the cast or bolted armor usually found on French tanks. Importantly, it was also sloped. The armor of the FCM-36 was resistant, though not always resistant enough, to the 37mm guns carried by the Panzer III or towed as the Pac-36. Despite suffering many penetrations during the battles of 1940, many other hits bounced off the better sloped parts of the vehicles. Some vehicles took several tens of impacts without a single penetration. However, enemy fire does not necessarily have to destroy a tank. It can also immobilize it, such as by breaking a track. The FCM-36 was armed with a 37mm SA-18 cannon and a 7.5mm Mach-31 Rybel machine gun. This was the standard armament of all tanks from the program. The SA-18 was designed for infantry support. It already equipped some of the Great War FT tanks, and there was an impressive quantity of ammunition already stockpiled. For both economic and industrial reasons, it was easier to reuse this weapon, especially as it was well suited for a small tank with a one-man turret. The size occupied by such a weapon was minimal, and it was the smallest caliber that could be used for infantry support, taking into account the 1899 Hague Convention banning the use of explosive ammunition for guns below 37 mm The muzzle velocity of the gun, around 367 meters per second, depending on the ammunition, allowed for a relatively curved trajectory, which was ideal for infantry support. However, its low muzzle velocity, small caliber, and curved trajectory were major drawbacks when it came to anti-tank duties. The only round able to defeat enemy tanks was the Model 1935 armor-piercing shell, but it arrived too late and in too small numbers to equip tank units. There was also the classic model 1892-1924 AP shell, which could penetrate 15 millimeters of armor at 400 meters at a 30-degree angle. This was insufficient, and only a measly 12 out of the total 102 stowed shells were AP. Furthermore, it should be noted that this shell dates from before the inception of tanks. In fact, this shell was not made to penetrate the armor of tanks at all, but instead to penetrate enemy bunkers. If the FCM-36 is somewhat unknown, it is because of its very limited production. Just 100 vehicles were delivered between the 2nd of May 1938 and the 13th of March 1939, only equipping two combat tank battalions, or BCCs for short. The main reason behind this limited production was the slow production rate of about nine FCM-36s per month. The FCM-36s were, without a doubt, some of the most beautiful vehicles to participate in the French campaign thanks to their colorful and complex camouflages and insignias. Camouflages came in three types. The first two were composed of very complex shapes with a number of tones and colors. And the third was composed of several colors in the shape of waves along the length of the vehicle. However, for nearly all camouflages, a very clear color band was present on the superior part of the turret. Each camouflage scheme had its own lines. The tones and global scheme were the only bits of the instructions respected. 
A good way to identify the unit an FCM-36 belonged to was the ace painted on the rear part of the turret, which showed which company and section a tank was from. As there were three companies of four sections in each BCC, there were four aces of red, white, and blue. The ace of spades represented the first section, the ace of hearts the second section, the ace of diamonds the third section, and the ace of clubs the fourth section. A blue ace represented the first company, a white ace the second company, and a red ace the third company. This principle was applied to all modern light infantry support tanks of the French Army from November 1939 onward. Testimonies of tank crews, as well as historical records of the battalions, give some interesting anecdotes about the FCM-36. The first point to note was a frustrating consequence of the FCM-36's modernity. The crews would often get chest pains due to the high internal pressure of the vehicles, which was a deliberate feature that allowed the vehicles to be gas-proof. This feature was years ahead of its time. Another interesting point is the presence of reports on the exceptional reliability of the vehicles. Captain Belbiok, the commander of the 2nd Company of the 4th BCC, explained that when operated by alert mechanics, the FCM tank revealed itself to be a splendid war machine, which gained the trust of all crews. Engaged in the Ardennes, a few kilometers south of Sedan, the FCM 36s of the 7th BCC were very often without infantry to support them. From as early as 6 o'clock on May 14, 1940, the companies began fighting. At first, the different companies performed relatively well, with little enemy resistance. The third company was the only one to face any real resistance as it encountered several anti-tank guns which immobilized it for a while, before the guns were knocked out by the tanks. The first company was met with a few machine guns, but they were swiftly dealt with. At a later and more crucial point in the battle, the FCMs faced much more significant resistance. The third company reached the outskirts of Connage unchallenged. But the infantry did not follow, and the company was forced to go back and pick it up. During a move on a road, six FCM 36s were stopped by two German tanks, followed by several more behind them. The FCMs fired continuously with their AP shells, but they soon ran out, as each tank carried only 12. The fight continued with explosive shells which could only slow down and blind the enemy tanks. The German vehicles were struggling to penetrate the FCMs until a tank armed with a 75mm gun and described as a Stug 3 fired and knocked out several vehicles by quote-unquote disemboweling them. The retreat of some vehicles was only possible by the accumulation of knocked out FCMs which shielded the other vehicles from the Panzers. Only three of the 13 tanks of the third company managed to make it back to friendly lines. The FCM-36 was the best light infantry tank that the French Army had in 1940, as stated by the Evaluating Commission in July 1936. However, it was plagued by several issues. The main ones were linked to its complicated production and the outdated doctrine which led to its conception. However, the units which were equipped with the tanks distinguished themselves with their actions particularly the 7th BCC, thanks to the experience they had gained during intensive training and close cooperation with infantry units. The FCM-36 shone in the role for which it was designed, infantry support. This concludes another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Remember to like, comment, and sacrifice your firstborn son to the cone. Keep us in your sights.